Hi everyone, uh, Gary Sinise here. I've had some tremendous uh, opportunities in aviation to be around some incredible pilots, do some pretty amazing things, landing on a carrier and an F-18 Super Hornet and uh, flying on an F-16 in Aviano. A lot of, lot of different things uh, over the years, landing on a carrier and a cod in, in the Persian Gulf, all kinds of good things. Uh, but uh, t today I'd like to talk about my trip uh, in the U-2 Dragon Lady, uh, the spy plane up in, at Beale Air Force Base. Uh, back in 2012, I had the great opportunity of flying up to 72,000 feet in a U-2. And that was one of the most incredible experiences. I, I trained, showed up at Beale one night, had a wonderful dinner with the colonel and some of the team up there. And then the following morning, I began training. And the training is all about, you know, basically all about what can go wrong in the airplane. And you've got to cram, uh, you know, months and months worth of training into six hours because I'm going on a flight the following day. So I had to spend, uh, I had to sp spend the day learning about the spacesuit. Of course, you're pressurized at about... 29,000 feet in the spacesuit that you wear to go up to 72,000 feet, which I did. Had a wonderful pilot. Uh, I was in a trainer because usually with the U-2, there's only one seat. There's a seat for the pilot. The pilot goes up uh, for 10, 12-hour missions, uh, surveying the landscape wherever they happen to be. My first encounter with the U-2 was over at, in the UAE, the United Arab Emirates, back in 2006, I was on my way to to uh, Iraq, actually, and uh, was it 2006? No, it was 2003. Uh, forgive me. I was with a, a, a group on a USO tour, and we went through the UAE, and that was the first encounter I had with a U-2 spy plane. Uh, we actually saw the plane land, and then they'd send these chase cars out behind it uh, because the U-2 has... There's no wheels on those wings. Those wings are so long and so big um, that uh, the plane actually balances on basically two wheels, one in the front and one in the back. There's no, no wheels on the wings at all. So these chase cars come out behind it after it lands and speed up behind it and radio to the pilot to tell the pilot, um, you know, you're a little low on the right, you're a little low on the left, and they, they help the pilot keep balanced all the way into the terminal, into the hangar. And uh, so I was in the chase car and went very fast behind the plane, and I got to see that, and I remember getting out of the chase car, and they put the, the stairway up to, the, uh, to where the pilot was coming out. The pilot came out, and it was about a 28-year-old woman pilot uh, who had just been up for about 10, 12 hours over Afghanistan. I got to do something similar in a, in a two-seater up at Beale Air Force Base where they train the pilots. We have a U-2 squadron up there. And I went up in June of 2012. I spent time with the pilots there uh, training. They taught me how to eject if I needed to eject. They taught me the spacesuit. I had to learn about the spacesuit and how you know, if, uh, if, I, if somehow the spacesuit depressurized, what would happen and how to, how to get out of that or how to, how to manage that. Um, I had to uh, learn, the, uh, of course, the parachutes and all the, all the training, what would happen uh, if, if the plane caught fire or anything like that. So it was, it was a very, very interesting uh, training day. And I was exhausted by the end of the day. And I remember laying down in my bed that night in the hotel room thinking, what am I getting myself into? Because uh, all the training is, is about what might go wrong with the airplane if you're up there and what to do about it, if it does. The next day, though, I woke up, I was so excited. They picked me up, I went, I put my space suit on, um, got into the airplane and we had a beautiful, incredible ride up to 72,000 feet. And the canopy above me was just a window. Uh, obviously I could see up and it was dark above me. 
you didn't see blue sky above me, but down below and all around, I could see blue sky and just a little bit of the curvature of the earth uh, at, that, at, that, uh, at that height. It was an incredible ride. I'll never forget it. Uh, uh, I'm so glad that the Palm Springs Aviation Museum, the Air Museum there, is preserving this history for all of us to enjoy. And I send many congratulations on 25 years to the Palm Springs Air Museum. God bless you. Thank you. And God bless America.